Why did we start The Future of Now? Now, initially, we started it because we were going backwards and forwards interstate and we were and we wanted to be able to help people that connected with us as well as our clients understand a little bit more about the world of human centered design and futuring. Then the pandemic hit and then we were under lockdown. So rather than stop it, we used it as a great opportunity to pivot and we used it as an opportunity to reach a wider audience as well as understand how to really build the capability in the business. Has it been worth the investment? The direction of more space has always been around joy. What brings us joy? What do we enjoy doing? Where's our passion? When we set up the future of now, it wasn't about a tr it wasn't the intention behind it wasn't transactional. It wasn't around lead generation. It was more about uh, helping us build our really to build our capability internally because we were having to go remote. And also for me, it was a it was a little bit of a playground because quite selfishly, I could go out there and use it as a device to go and connect with different people and learn about different things. Plus in Australia, there's a massive gap. All of these amazing conversations and networking events all happen at like three in the morning. So I thought it was a great opportunity as well. What has been your favorite thing about running the program? There's a couple of things. So internally, it's been really exciting for me and the team. So we have one person in particular that's taken charge of the future of now, and she's done an amazing job. So the future of now wouldn't be where it is without that person. We've now got a podcast. We've been able to use it as a sandpit for more space for light to test out different things, to test out things like green room, to test out things like butter and um, Google Meet or Topia, bringing the guys from Topia was just an incredible experience of how we engage and interact, being able to learn from different people within the community and then being so generous with their time and other organizations that have built relationships through that community and that link of the future of now has just been just been amazing. Being able to provide that platform and that op those opportunities, whether they're for people that are practitioners that are out that aren't speakers and also the speakers as well, being able to give them a platform in the APAC region. What is something you wish you had known before starting the program? I think not knowing has been fantastic. Ignorance is bliss because if you don't try things, you can't learn. So we, we learned heaps in regards to, like we spent a day trying to figure out calendar invites and schedule people months in advance. I like the fact we went into it and we defined what it was. We documented it into statement of work. So we had process. We've we built this from, from basically from a thought bubble. And I appreciate the fact that we didn't have any experts. We didn't have to unlearn. We were able to build it as a team. So therefore, I, I'm quite happy. I, I'm absolutely satisfied and I never regret anything we've done because everything we've done has been a sound investment for us to get to this point, to learn and understand how we want to take it forward. How has the program changed since it first started? We've had to constantly change the program of the future of now because it gets stale really quickly. Both as soon as it becomes boring, we had to figure out how to change the format of it. As soon as it interrupted what we were doing. So we originally we were doing it fortnightly from memory. And that pretty much stopped us from any kind of internal marketing plus client work. So we had to change that format. There were other things around it as well, where we'd have 150 registrants and only have a small number of participants turn up. Now I know uh, that is a common occurrence across a lot of people that do that put on similar three webinar learning opportunities. So rather than see that as a negative, we saw that as an opportunity to see how can we how can we maximize that experience? What other tools can we use? How can we make it more interesting? And that allowed us to come up with the concept of takeovers, for example. And then this year we launched the podcast, which could potentially be the future of the future of now we don't know yet but 
it's enabled us to meet people completely differently where and a credit has to not just go out to the team for being having that appetite for risk also has to be it has to be credit has to be due to our community the people that have stuck with us from the beginning every week we've asked them for feedback in our surveys and every week somebody's given us a few pieces of gold they've give, they've been honest and their feedback and their honesty has helped shape the future now what advice would you give to those wanting to start a community based program once you have an intention and a purpose and it makes sense for you now some people might start a channel just for revenue generation and lead generation and that's cool but unless you have a strategy and there's some sort of substance behind it you're going to run out of juice eventually because if it's not working and you don't have that instant roi you'll just pull up stunts eventually and just say no it's not working let's try something else you have to stick with it you have to have a plan on it so i think going back to the original question have substance make sure it has meaning and make sure you feel ready to be committed to it for a certain period. Otherwise, you will you will find it tough and you'll think it's an expense as opposed to an investment, whether that's in learning, whether that's in building a community or whatever that might be. If there are people out there that have enjoyed and are enjoying and want to be part of the community or want to contribute and have something to say and want to be part of the podcast and want to be part of the talk shops and have ideas on how we could progress the platform or the channel we welcome that because this is this is very much everybody's thing this is like we you know we give away the books that people will give away we give the reading list we're trying to share the tools we really we really want to establish the future now as a as a real as a real credible source of knowledge